So it's probably best to talk shit about Marvel films and see what caliber of death threats I can receive. The Marvel movie formula. Seriously, from this point on, most of the movies follow the exact same formula and it feels like you're watching the exact same movie just with a different coat of paint. If, I, if I'm sitting there, the dumbass audience, and I'm thinking of ways it could have been done better, that's a problem for me, because if I'm watching a really good movie, I don't have those thoughts. From Marvel and Disney, the lesson is clear for any kids watching. If a problem presents itself, if there is an obstacle, punch it, fight it, torture it until it's dead. In the past few years, the superhero movie fatigue has started to kick in. And while that's partly due to how many Marvel movies keep coming out, the real problem is that all these Marvel movies feel the same. This means that 100% of the stories end with a violent conflict in order to resolve the story. In this world, the only way to resolve conflicts is through destructive behaviors. From Marvel and Disney, the lesson is clear for any kids watching. If a problem presents itself, if there is an obstacle, punch it, fight it, torture it until it's dead. Now, an argument can be made that these are action movies, and war movies at that. But what's amazing to me is how much critics seem to think that this is better somehow. They say, oh, Batman vs Superman was really gloomy, it was too grim, uh, it was very violent, I wasn't very happy about that. But this movie is good fun. Uh, it's really, really funny, and there's some really good one-liners in it, and there's lots and lots of horrible violence, and I think that's right, and I think that's good. It doesn't, doesn't make much sense to me, it seems like a disparity in critical reaction. I think that's the film wanting the violence to just wash over you as a backdrop for fun. There's an endless critical approval of the whole thing, ignoring how disturbing its messages were, how terribly written its plot and script is, and how derivative and cash-grabbing the whole franchise is now. The problem is repetition. When you do the same thing over and over, your audience will eventually figure out how the magic trick works. The Marvel movie formula. Seriously, from this point on, most of the movies follow the exact same formula and it feels like you're watching the exact same movie, just with a different coat of paint. They all seem generic because they follow the same formula. Just look at the Iron Man movies. Tony Stark's life is in jeopardy. He creates a new piece of tech that saves himself. The villains consist of an evil businessman and a mercenary. The movie ends with one of them using an Iron Man suit to try to blow up the world, and a supporting character helps Tony save the day and beat the bad guy. Millionaire Playboy. He's a genius, and he drives fast cars everywhere. Shame for him, because he gets terribly injured in a crash. Unable to heal, he travels to Tibet and learns superpowers from a wise old master. She's British, actually British, unlike most of the people in this film who are British but are pretending not to be. There's a villain who used to be just like Strange, but has been tempted by the dark side, and they're not that different, you and I, and he wants to use portals to destroy the Earth, because his family died, or he wants to be immortal, or... yeah. Even the Avengers movies have become formulaic. Avengers Age of Ultron is basically just the first movie again. You start off with normal times, everything is fine and happy. Then there's a bad guy. Oh no. But it's okay because they're all lighthearted and funny so children don't get scared. Captain America and Tony Stark have a conflicting relationship. The Hulk fights against one of the Avengers. Members of the team are being mind controlled. A minor character is killed off in an attempt to deliver some sort of emotional impact. The movie's climax involves a city being destroyed while the Avengers fight through countless identical enemies in an attempt to take down a power-hungry supervillain trying to take over the world. And the post credit sequence focuses on the character of Thanos, who isn't doing anything particularly interesting and is just there so comic book fans can notice him. After Marvel saw the winning formula with the Avengers, they all knew they really didn't need to try anymore. They can just make the same movie over and over and over again and people will eat that shit up. <laughs> <laughs> finally, after seven years of light-hearted action comedy, we were finally gonna get the dark, gritty movie we all wanted. I remember watching the trailer for the first time and not being able to wait for this movie to come out. And then when it came out, it was nothing but lies. Malicious, heartbreaking lies. No, man. Eh, a Sevilla, y me, me, y el último que cuando ya salió la vida en de regla, estamos llorando los dos. Me, me cobró el tío la paz. Me cobró a 500 metros la paz. Y ya no fui más. Me fui andando a coger los amarillos hasta hoy. Eso.
And the worst part of it all is that it's not even a movie. It's a damn commercial! It's a setup for all the other movies to follow, and that's absolutely infuriating. Knowing in the end that nothing really mattered because it's all a setup. Everything is wrong with this movie, and I fucking hate it. It's actually insulting to watch and marks the time that I started to dislike Marvel movies. <laughs> I really don't give a shit about Doctor Strange. I really don't give a shit about Thor Ragnarok. I really don't give a shit about Black Panther. Another example of how the MCU refuses to take risks is all the death fakeouts. Instead of taking risks and killing off characters, they constantly play it safe and bring whoever died back to life. All Marvel movie heroes go unconscious and you're supposed to believe they're dead, even though you know they're not. Coulson, Bucky, Nick Fury, Loki, these characters died only to be resurrected in an extremely contrived series of events. Not only does this rob their deaths of any sort of emotional impact, but it also feels really cheap seeing them bring characters back from the dead just because they're afraid to take risks and kill them off. In every conversation scene, all you ever get is shot, reverse shot. It works, sure, you can see what's going on and everything, you know who's talking, but it makes it kind of inoffensive, kind of dull to watch. The fights aren't much better because they're really heavily edited to cover up the gaps in the choreography and the stuntmen. It's pretty blandly directed and very heavily overcut, so it's about as cinematic as an episode of Game of Thrones. That flatter look makes sense for, say, Spotlight or Sicario, where you might want the visuals more muted and closer to reality. But when you're dealing with a big, bombastic superhero movie, don't you want the images to be bright, to pop off the screen, not to be a bunch of muddy grey tones? The recent DC movies, for all their problems, at least have this figured out. It's really good looking for TV. But this isn't TV, this is a blockbuster that's shot like a high-end TV drama. Marvel's first three movies, Iron Man 1 and 2, and Thor, were shot on film. After that, they switched to digital, using the genesis on Captain America The First Avenger, and then the Ari Alexa on every one of their subsequent films, from The Avengers up through Doctor Strange. They consistently use the same style of color grading on all their digital footage, creating an image that's flat and dull when it should be vibrant and exciting. Digital cinematography can look amazing, but it has to be graded properly. The root of the problem is the lack of proper black values, as in the spots in the image that should be black, like the deepest parts of the shadows, aren't they've mostly turned to TV directors to do stuff. They had Alan Taylor from Game of Thrones doing Thor The Dark World, and then we've got the Rousseaus, who have mostly just done sitcom work on TV. As a result, they get what people seem to crave. Bland, homogenous visuals, rote procedural performances, and an endless kowtowing to Kevin Feig's monomaniacal vision. <laughs> There's no denying that the Marvel Cinematic Universe has a severe lack of diversity. I mean, look at this, the main cast is just a bunch of white people. I'd like to make the claim that Civil War actually spews some really gross politics. The first thing I'd like to talk about is how it treats Black Panther. Sure, you have characters like Heimdall, Rhodey, and Falcon, but there's a problem with that. Heimdall is basically Thor's sidekick, Rhodey's basically Iron Man's sidekick, and Falcon is basically Captain America's sidekick. So when Marvel introduces a black leader, they want him to be otherworldly, inexplicable, animalistic, volatile, physically violent, and somehow slightly mystical as well. To remind us of his otherness, whenever he jumps on screen, he gets his own musical leitmotif. It's a set of tribal drums and a little pipe like this. It's like he's turned on a world music CD every time he gets in a fight. It's an effort by Marvel to remind us that he's not like us, whenever us is a, a white man. He's otherly, primal, different, African. Brilliant, folks. Representation's finally here. Marvel's done all of they can. Yippee. What about gender diversity? Where is all the women? Pepper Potts and Jane Foster are basically just generic love interests. Maria Hill and Scarlet Witch haven't gotten much to do. The only prominent female character is Black Widow, who we know nothing about. Agent Hill, Pepper Potts, Jane Foster, are they not the shittest characters in the films? Black Widow was on the up and she was going to be great until they felt they needed to make her into a love interest for the Hulk. What's that shit? And then Mark Wise and then Petroleo. And then Prestige. And then Petriese. Dodgy humour. As the films have gone on, the humour seems to have become more of a forced issue, you know? We started funny, we need to carry on being hilariously funny. But whenever he tries to inject his performance with a bit of depth, the movie does its best to ruin it by shoving a bit of unwanted humour in there. Crying because something tragic's happened. <laughs> 
boing, slide whistle, fart noise, audience laugh, pay money, eat popcorn, buy action figure, go home. Movie done. Over. Finished. Shitty villains. There's no way getting around it. The Marvel Cinematic Universe has a villain problem. It's common knowledge that Marvel films have suffered from weak villains. They craft their heroes with such precision that they seem to overlook the bad guys. The villain formula. Guy in a suit teams up with a mercenary. Guy in a suit teams up with a mercenary. Guy in a suit teams up with a mercenary. Guy in a suit teams up with a mercenary. Guy in a suit teams up with a mercenary. Guy in a suit teams up with a mercenary. Guy in a suit teams up with a... Mads Mikkelsen has the same look on his face behind the makeup. He's almost smirking because he knows he could just read the lines off a teleprompter and his performance would be better than the whole film. Which gives it a weird sort of vibe, actually. You've got about five Oscar-nominated actors doing their best to do as little as possible, and that makes everything feel kind of strangely casual. Which is a tone. I guess. All MCU films give you way too much hints who's going to double cross who. So when one of the bad guys comes clean, you saw it coming from a mile. Marvel movies always have a bad guy that tries to study and replicate the good guy's secret weapon. Even Loki, an incredibly charismatic and loved presence in the MCU, has questionable reasoning. I mean, does he hate his dad? Or is he just a psychopath? What's he doing in the Avengers? Does his helmet make him lean forward more? All good questions, all good questions. But as terrible as some of these villains have been, there's also a big problem with the villain they're setting up. I mean, as a comic book fan, I know this character and I know what he's capable of, but in terms of these movies, who cares about Thanos? This is supposed to be the biggest bad guy in this universe, but these movies have given viewers no reason to care about Thanos. He's only shown up in three scenes, and in all three scenes, he's done absolutely jack shit. In the Age of Ultron post credit sequence, Thanos grabs the Infinity Gauntlet and says, fine, I'll do it myself. Why didn't he do it himself in the first place? He didn't take the Infinity Gauntlet until after the events of Age of Ultron. He was sitting on his ass for 11 movies. All MCU films always have issues with cast and crew members, and they have to be replaced in sequels. The Marvel Cinematic Universe has a habit of recasting their characters. This is supposed to be a set of movies that share the same universe and feed into each other, so it's pretty confusing when you see a character being played by a completely different actor than when you last saw them. The studios replaced Terrence Howard for Don Cheadle as War Machine, Edward Norton was replaced by Mark Ruffalo, and in Thor, Josh Dallas plays Fangio first, and he's replaced by Zachary Levi in the sequel. And then you have the character of Howard Stark, who's been played by three different actors already. Gerard Sanders played Howard Stark in Iron Man 1, John Slattery played Howard Stark in Iron Man 2, and Dominic Cooper played Howard Stark in Captain America. All these recasts ruin the so-called continuity that this universe is trying to achieve. Not just because the recasts look different, but they play the characters a different way and they have different personalities. I remember reading that you were inspired by the 70s kind of thrillers. Right. Um, did you have any other genres that you looked for on this one? Yeah, Civil War to us is a psychological thrill, at least the components of it that have to do with the, uh, the villain in the movie, Zemo. Uh, and uh, so we looked at films like Seven and Fargo for these, you know, those elements of... Uh, of, uh, of a psychological thriller that lead towards a very cathartic revelation for one of the lead characters. Um, I hope to God this guy's fucking movie <laughs> is more interesting than his analogy of what his fucking movie is going to be. <laughs> I never heard, what the fuck was that? That was like a deposition. Who gives a shit, man? This is, let me tell you something. Uh, we looked at The Godfather, which has multiple characters. Uh, who each have arcs that get pulled through the film. Mm -hmm. uh, so we really looked at how Coppola was jumping back and forth between each story to you know, weaving them into a unified whole. Be so sincere, so serious about his movie. Just cut the shit. You know, we grew up uh, with our dad. A big thing was watching The Late Show with him. He was a big film buff, and his favorite movies were 70s thrillers, Parallax View, Three Days of Condor, French Connection. We've seen The French Connection a million times. No one, you think that any of the kids that are going to see this fucking thing <laughs> And the parents that have to drag their kids to see this nonsense are going to sit there and watch the, 1993, the 1933 version. The great thing about being a comic book geek and a film geek where you're working in you know, two genres that you adore is you just go, well, what do I want to see? What, what do I want to put up on that screen? And that's what's in this movie. Cut the bullshit, man. <laughs> just make the fucking movie. Hopefully it's huge success. <laughs> 
So please don't get all butt hurt and offended. Like, oh man, fuck you, this civil war. You just don't understand. If I if I'm sitting there, the dumbass audience, and I'm thinking of ways it could have been done better. That's a problem for me, because if I'm watching a really good movie, I don't have those thoughts. In the previous, in the previous Captain America movie, it, there was, it was uncovered that Hydra was still around and had infiltrated the highest levels of government. So with that being the case, does it make any sense to put the Avengers under the purview of the government? No, never mentioned once. Unfortunately, the plot only makes sense if everyone in it acts like an idiot. Tony Stark, the guy who was always the rogue, who said, yeah, I privatized world peace, you're welcome. This guy who's always flaunted the rules and said fuck authority, all of a sudden, he's a bitch for the government. And why? Some woman came to him and said, my son was one of the ones killed in the accident. And Tony Stark looks at the picture and he's like, bah, 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 bah. I've had a change of heart. Oh. They're, they're totally pulling their punches through the entire thing. They don't really want to hurt each other because the conflict hasn't escalated to the point where they want to. How is that interesting? Lots of the marketing on the film has revolved around the idea that each side is equal. Team Cap or Team Iron Man. In the end, the only discussion I was having was which team I hated more. Yeah, we're gonna, woo, okay. They're pulling their punches. They're not trying to kill each other. They're not trying to win some actual civil war. They're not trying to decide the fate of how things are gonna keep going from that point on. Captain America protecting Bucky, who has no real character anyway. The Winter Soldier, big fucking deal. Boring in the last movie, boring in this movie. Well, I, I, you know, he, he's our Lord and Savior, Kevin Feige. <laughs> you know, well, I mean, I, I, <laughs> everything Marvel does, I love. When you look back at the history of Hollywood, the Marvel Cinematic Universe is going to be looked upon as one of the great achievements. The way like David O. Selznick produced Gone with the Wind. Totally. Mm -hmm. You know, and he's Lord Commander Kevin Feige, our Lord and Savior, who's, they really, I mean, once again, Kevin Feige, the man at the top, yep. they really know what to do to get us. If you love the Marvel Cinematic Universe, they always give you enough flavor in these things to just make you giddy with excitement. I mean, I just love the fact that the strings are being pulled together. Everything mm -hmm. is being tightened, you know, and and it's just great. I mean, Kevin Feige, the guy, the man is a master of, of orchestrating. What is he again? He's our Lord and Savior. That's right. There was just a tremendous amount of research done because ants are amazing. Frankly, we could make 12 more of these films and still not actually explore everything that ants can do in real life. Does anyone take this shit serious? Yeah. It's fucking bullshit, man. <laughs> it's fucking bullshit. <laughs> All MCU films has one of the main characters get hit by a car at least once. The heroes in Marvel movies always get taken prisoner. All MCU films always have a scene where the hero gets knocked out, the screen goes black, and he wakes up strapped up to a bed not remembering what happened a couple of seconds before. All MCU films have a scene where somebody tries to make the hero go viral by recording them. All MCU films include a part where someone or some people break into a science lab and interrupt experiments. All MCU films cameo the most affordable Marvel character from another Marvel film to tie the universes together. Together.